G'day guys, JBC here for JBC Reviews and thanks for tuning in again. Coming up, I've got a very cool comparison between two models that are developing a bit of a cult following. And they are the Ching Durafly Spitfire and the Ching FMS Spitfire. Now, both are EPO, both are about the same in terms of wingspan, but the question begs, is that where the similarity ends? Let's find out. Back again guys, and thanks again for tuning in. Um, Alright, now these two very, very cool Spitfires that are out on the market at the moment. Um, I do apologise for not getting this video out early. I did promise it a while back and I finally now have it. Anyway, um, like I said, I was very lucky enough to be able to have these two birds side by side and get an up close and personal look at them. Um, now, you would think that they are, how can I say, quite similar but when they're side by side, there are actually quite a lot of differences between the two. Um, but I'll start off, um, if you go by the specs of what's listed, just follow the link link down below if you want to find out um, where to buy and uh, their list prices. Now at the time of this review, the Hobby King are listing it um, from their China warehouse for I think it's one nineteen ninety nine, so 120 bucks US. Um, and say Aerial Hobby have got a kit for one twenty six ninety nine, so seven bucks different. Um, but the difference being, you get a motor with the, uh, you get a brushless motor with the Hobby King slash Drew of Fly Spitfire and there is no motor for the FMS version from Aero Hobby. Outside of that, the rest is pretty much, oh sorry, and you also get servos um, with the Hobby King with the Drew of Fly one, you don't get servos in the kit for the FMS. Now, what is the difference physically? Uh, the FMS is slightly, and I only say slightly small, it's 20 mils smaller, shorter on the wingspan and 50 mils shorter in the length. Now if you've got them side by side you can't tell and especially cannot tell in the air. Um, the Durafly Spitfire is a 3S power system, the FMS uses a 4S power system. Um, the servos, both planes use 9 gram servos for aileron and rudder. Uh, um, where, and the FMS version uses a 17 gram servo for its elevator, so slightly bigger, slightly beefier. Um, and the Durafly uses 20 gram servos for the mechanical retracts, and the FMS uses electric retracts. Um, now, physically and, and uh, specification wise, that's the differences. Um, but now, I'll, let's get up close and personal, and I'll start from the front of the plane, from the spinner, and we'll go right through both of them and list the differences between For the spinner and props, the Durafly uses a 3 inch white two blade spinner with an 11 by 7 prop and the FMS uses a 3 and 1 quarter inch, so slightly bigger uh, but white again spinner with a 3 blade 13 by 9 prop. Looking at the retracts, on the Durafly um, it uses, it actually has sprung struts and foam wheels and the retracts are mechanical operated by a 20 gram servo. Now the FMS uses uh, digital servo-less retracts, electric ones, with the, the struts are not sprung um, and it has rubber wheels. Uh, the battery bay is quite large on the Durafly. It's accessed via a hatch at the front on the top of the nose or top of or the top front of the plane. Um, it's easy to get to and very large. You can fit quite a large battery in there. Um, and on the FMS, it's you have access via the canopy, which is removable, and you can slide the battery through a hole there all the way up to the front of the plane and it's actually quite large, you can fit quite a big battery in there also. Uh, for the servos, now they've both taken, they both use 9 gram servos, the Durafly uh, actually has a different system by where the servos for the ailerons are not mounted in traditional pos position in the wing, uh, 
and where you can see them there. They're inside the fuselage and uses torque rods to get to or to operate the ailerons so they're kind of hidden. Um, gives it a bit, a bit more of a cleaner look. On the FMS version it uses uh, the ailerons, it's, for the ailerons, the surveys are in the wings, located in the wings, and the rudder obviously is hidden inside, an elevator is hidden inside the fuselage. And the difference being is uh, the FMS uses a, a bigger 17 gram servo uh, to operate the elevator. For motor, the Durafly uses a 3542 size 1100 kV uh, motor on 3S. And with the 11 by 7 prop, it's going to give you about 550 to 600 watts. And the FMS uses a 3648 can motor at 520 kV. And when that's made it up to the 13 by 9 three blade prop, it gives you about 600 to 650 watts. Depends how healthy your battery is. Okay, side by side, the Durafly and FMS Spitfire, two very cool, two very funky flying and looking planes. But they do have their bad points. I'll start off with the Durafly. Um, reports have come back of many guys stripping their servos quite easily and, and on very small soft knocks to control surfaces. Now that tells me that these servos are probably not the best quality. Um, easy fix, you know, you can swap them out and, and put in some decent quality servos, ones that you know uh, and trust. And for me personally, having a nine gram plastic gear servo for the elevator on a bird this size is not a good thing. And hopefully, Hobby King or Durafly can look at that and change that in the future. The rudder tail wheel is another point of uh, discussion. It's kind of on the weak side. People have broken them or, or damaged them and they're not working properly. Um, so look at the way that mates are the fuse and you could strengthen that. Or even just get rid of the, the tail wheel rudder servo altogether and have it free casting. I've done it myself personally. It works really well on several of my models and it's a really good, simple, quick fix. Uh, reports also that the spinner has a vibration through it at certain RPMs. Not everybody, but some. So but again, that's not a hard fix. Swap out the spinner, put something good in there. Um, classic Durafly is its tendency to nose over on anything other than a greased landing or a bitumen runway. Now, there isn't a really uh, a simple fix to this. It needs more forward rake in order to get around that. Now, it's hard to do on the Spitfire. It's not impossible, but it's hard to do because the, uh, the Durafly Spitfire has these big plastic mounts or pockets, I guess that you could say, that sit in the, in the wing. Um, and they're not the easiest things to, to remove. They're not impossible, but it's not a simple fix. Uh, also, the, some guys are reporting that the ailerons uh, don't have a precise control or precise feel in their control, whether that's got anything to do with the torque rod system that they use or not. Um, and that's not everybody, that's only, I'm just reporting what I hear um, and what I read. So, but that's something to have a look at. Um, and this is not really a bad thing, but something I thought I'd point out, you're, uh, you're sort of limited in your motor choice on the Durafly. There's not a lot of room in there uh, to go to something a little bit bigger if you want to upgrade the power system and you know go 4 or 5S and use a bigger motor. Um, you can do it, but you will have to modify either the firewall to get the motor further back or, or do some cutting of some foam, etc. And moving along to the FMS Speedy. Now that also does have its bad points. Um, first and foremost, the CG is very hard to achieve unless you add some dead weight up front. Now, if you, d if you do decide to go that route, you do have quite a bit of room to do that. Um, or you can go a slightly bigger motor um, and uh, obviously bigger batteries and the plus side is you do have the room in there to add a big battery and you do have the room to add a large motor if you want to um, but you will definitely need weight up front to get the CG right now also with the FMS Spitfire whether it's a Spitfire thing I'm not sure but this one also has a tendency to nose over on anything but a grease landing or a bitumen runway um, now a bit of a catch-22 um, they've tried to keep it scale, so they've gone for the landing gear to have a narrow track. Now, that's fine and it looks good, but um, when it is on the ground, if you're going too quick and you accidentally hit the rudder control and you turn left or right, she will tip over a bit and scrape the wings. So you've got to keep your, your ground speed nice and slow before you decide to turn. 
Now, the other thing is the retract mount system on the on the FMS bird is kind of weak. Um, it's not the greatest, it's not very strong, and it probably won't last very many flights. But on the plus side, it can be modified very easily, a lot more easily than the Durafly. Um, they're just these little plastic mounts which can be removed and cut a bit of foam away and you can very easily stick in some, some uh, wooden rails. And with that mod, I guess, you can also add yourself some forward rake which will then eliminate the nose overs. So yeah, the retracks, the retracks themselves are okay, but the mounting system is not very good. But it can be modified a lot more easily than the Durafly. So something to keep aware. So moving along to some of the good points on these planes. Now, the paint and finish on these planes, I was quite impressed. They're both really, really nice. Um, as you would know, if you've ever tried to paint EPO, it can be difficult, but it looks like Durafly and FMS have mastered it and they've done a really good job. Now, for some reason in the video, the FMS uh, green the dark olive green actually looks brown. It's not brown, I can tell you right now. Um, when you see it in the flesh, it is definitely, definitely a green. Um, the EPO on both planes, very, very tough, very good, and always helps against some of those not so gracious landings. Or in case any of you have ever encountered a jumping tree, it can help against them as well, which I'm sure you know all of us have one, one point in time or another. The wing mount system on both planes is good. They both use uh, carbon spars in the wings, nice and strong and wing bolts to bolt to the fuse. Um, strong, I can't see them coming apart in flight at all, which can always help. Now the power systems on both planes, really, really good. Um, even though one is a 3S system and one is a 4S system, uh, both seem to have quite a lot of power and more than enough for the average flyer. Uh, one point I will make, for some reason Hobby King lists a 40 amp ESC. Now if you put in a 40 amp ESC into this plane, into the Durafly Spitfire, you will let out the smoke and the thing will crash because it pulls around 50 amps at a uh, wide open. Now, so go for something like a 60 and you shouldn't have any problems. So side by side, the two planes, you will notice straight away that the Durafly has a bigger wing. It has larger stabilizers, both vertical and horizontal, and the fuselage is actually quite a lot thicker. Um, now, I have to say that the FMS is probably a little bit more scale looking for all you scale buffs. Um, it's also modelled off a of Mark 9, hence you can see the cannon sticking out the front. Now you can go online, you can check out Alan Deere. He was a, an ace, he was a Kiwi um, ace back in the Second World War, and that's whose plane the FMS was actually modelled off. And they did a really good job in recreating. Um, so definitely kudos to FMS for that. So how do these differences between both planes translate in the air? Now, surprisingly, not a lot. So there really isn't that much for me to say. They both fly very, very similar. Both are exceptionally nice flyers. And if I was to say to you, which of the two do you think, or which one of the two do you think is the 3S and which one do you think is the 4S after seeing them fly, I reckon you'd be hard pressed to find it, uh, to pick it because there really is that little in it. Um, one noticeable difference though, is that the Durafly does seem to be a bit more of a floater between the two. Now I'm not sure if uh, that's because it's got a slightly bigger wing, but it seems to be able to slow down slightly more uh, than the FMS. But overall, two fantastic flying planes, very nice, very, very good flies overall. Okay guys, just to wrap it up now, um, with the Durafly Spitfire, if you purchase that, you will need to swap out the servos, okay? That's a done deal. I wouldn't trust a plane that size to those servos. If you go the FMS, you're gonna have to add some weight up front to get that CG sorted. Now, the Achilles of both planes, and a lot of planes, is the Retrax. They're a better mount system on the Durafly, but more awkward to modify. A weaker mount system on the FMS, but much easier to modify. So. Uh, if you were to purchase either one, you're going to be really, really happy. Both fly really, really nicely. Um, great planes. Now, if you've got more 3S batteries, budget's high on your list, and you're not so sort of worried about scale looks, I'd say go for the Durafly. Um, if scale looks are important, you've got a lot of 4S batteries, and you're like mucking around with putting in bigger motors and modifying and that sort of stuff, the FMS might be better for you. So, anyway, I hope all the FMS guys and all the Durafly guys get on board. Leave some comments, have a bit of a dig of each other, at each other have a bit of a laugh, and uh, if you do like the video, subscribe, and you'll get updated with all the new ones as they get released. This is JBC, I hope you've enjoyed, and I will catch you next time. Oh, it's gorgeous, beautiful. There's a happy Spitfire's wagging his tail. It's a happy Spitfire, yeah, tickle his tummy.
tickle, tickle his tummy. <laughs> oh, who likes that? Yeah, good boy. <laughs>